I'm Paula O'Brien. So you want to play with digital painting and drawing? Why not? It's a great way to have your whole studio at your fingertips. You can use the Apple Pencil, but I always take along an inexpensive stylus because if the Apple Pencil runs out of power or you leave it behind, both of these work better than your finger. But of course you can just use your finger too. Before I started using Adobe Sketch, I'd been using brushes for several years with just my finger, no layers, I didn't understand about layers at that time, to great effect in life drawing. Then I moved up to Adobe Sketch, probably in 2016, and started working with the Apple Pencil. You can get great textures and effects and work in layers, and that's the whole beauty of it, working in layers. You can have it with you in your bag, and all you need is some kind of a stylus or your hand and your device, and off you go. No need to wait for paint to dry, no need to buy more tubes of paint. It's a great plein air sketching tool. And you can take it into places that you can't bring real paint and splash around. Let's move into the app. In the app, you can go way back through sort of an archaeological dig of all your projects, way back to the beginning. Let's go way back to the beginning. And when you open up your project, you'll see the layers that you were creating. And here's your tools, how it ended. This one works with layers of transparency. Believe me, when you get started with this app, just take it along. Use it while you're watching TV. Use it doing a commute. Just play with the textures and layers until you figure out how to use the tools. Remember, it took you a long time to learn how to tie your shoelaces or use your other paints. So give yourself time. Eventually, I was just sampling the different brushes and different effects. Eventually, you come up with a lot of stuff. It's kind of good to organize it into different sections. I always take it to life draw. Just recently, I started to organize each session into one folder. Here I am starting with the one minute poses, eventually the five minute, 10, 15, etc., and putting them into one folder. Here's an example of my most recent session to life drawing. I started out by making some pages that I might want to have the same size and format and color. So I made one page and then replicated it. Here's my one minute poses. They're all in layers in one document. Unfortunately, I turned the screen sideways. So here's the five minute poses, 10, 15, 20, etc., and up to the last 30 minute poses. So if we go in here, here are all my layers. You can see there's many layers. I just keep making a layer, adding it on top, going below, darkening it up, revealing it below. Here's the different brushes that I used last. Let's watch the process of making this. Here's the time lapse of this. Working with acrylic paint. Watercolor effect behind. Marker brush on top. And some texturing and some erasing of that. Now you can always stop this video at any point and run it backwards and forwards. And there's the final image. So once you've created a few sketching textural projects for your own research, it's great to finally put them into some order. So let's see how to do that, because it's not actually that easy to understand. Here's some images I want to put in my folder called Test and play samples, which is where that kind of stuff goes, instead of cluttering up my gallery here. So I'm going to open this picture. Unfortunately, I have to just go back to this step, choose the ellipsis here, select the document, and move it to test and play samples. And let's do it with the next one too. I'm going to select the document and move it to test and play samples. So if I go into this test and play samples, here they are. Now these are very interesting to keep because you'll go back and look at them and they're just interesting processes that you were experimenting with something at some point. Don't throw them out. They're some reference or it doesn't matter. So here's a little project I was playing with, just again, playing with different brushes and experiments and layers. So let's watch the time lapse again. Here's the layers. Lots of layers. 
and of course you can move them above and below. When you're in the app, be careful not to draw upon your image because you're actually in the live screen right now. That's why it's always great to save it to your images in order to show it to someone else. Again, let's save the time lapse and export that to videos. So instead of instead of messing around with this lovely original of whatever it is, if you want to share this with anybody else, it's right here in your camera roll. Here's the flat image and you can touch it without messing up your original and here's the time lapse. So textures, playing with textures, what happens when you add this, when you drip that, when you scratch through. Play with the tool so you can understand all the processes that it can be potential for. It's not meant to be a final piece, it's just an experiment. Let's look at a plein air painting I did recently. Now why would you take your sketch pad plein air painting? Well, maybe you had it in your bag and didn't want to carry along your real easel and your real oils. It was too cold, too windy, you didn't have time, you didn't want the full setup, you don't want to carry the weight. You can take your iPad or your tablet. Remember, Adobe Sketch is good for Android devices too. So here's my layers, here's my tools, and if we watch the time lapse of this, you'll see my process. I'm just going to stop it here and there. So I always start on the second layer, and then which would be the sketch layer, and then fill in behind with watercolor, different kind of textures, coming above, below, filling in the trees darker, adding textures to the water. Lots of little things, deepening, highlighting until you get to the final process. Now this is an example of a location I'm actually taking to the Real Studio painting now. So you might think of this as a color sketch for a final painting, or it might be a finished result. The process is what's important. The process is where you're going to learn things as you go along, and digital painting informs your real painting. So if you don't want things splooshy and abstract, there's no need to. You can paint in your own style. Let's look at another one. I was down on the dock chatting with this fellow and his boat. Great textures, fishing boat, lots of interesting characters. I was just sitting on the edge of the dock and painting. Let's look at the time lapse for that. Again, starting on the second layer with my outline, working watercolors in behind. Textures on top that are sort of like pastels. Ink pen. Marker chisel, darks and lights on different layers. My signature on top. Coming to the final version. So that's a little bit of a preview of how to use Adobe Photoshop Sketch. We'll talk about how to bring an image in next and play with that. Thanks for watching. I'm Paula O'Brien.